Hi students, uh, today we are going to see uh, about web caching. Uh, web cache, what is web cache? It is nothing but it's a proxy server. What is proxy? Proxy is nothing but uh, a duplicate. But it is not an actual one, that is called proxy. So for instead of somebody else, if some device or something is doing one any other any work then it is called proxy so if uh, any uh, device any host is going to act as a server but it's not actually a server then we can call it as proxy server or web cache okay so we will take some example here and see what is web caching and how it is going to help the users in the network okay see here uh, suppose a browser is requesting the object the object can be see you are going to uh, your browser and you are typing uh, in your google search uh, like what how many number of states are there in india okay this is the request you are giving http request you are giving to the google server okay so what happens the browser establishes a tcp connection to the web cache and send the http request for the object to the web cache the web cache checks to see if it has a copy of the object stored locally if anybody have sent the same request in the past or in the history then it will give the response by itself okay if it doesn't have the record of the same question and answer then it will pass through the request to the Google server. So if it does, the web cache returns the object within, within an HTTP response message to the client browser. If the web cache does not have the object, if your web cache does not have the response to the question you have asked, what is the question I said? How many number of states are there in India? Okay, so if it doesn't have, your web cache is not having the answer for the request you made, then what it will do, the web cache then sends a HTTP request for the object into the cache to server TCP connection. As I said, it will send the request to the Google server. The web cache then sends a an HTTP request for the object, in, yes, uh, sorry, repeated. After receiving this request, the origin server sends the object within an HTTP response to the web cache. Once the request is uh, received by the Google server, it will give the response as a HTTP response to the web cache. What this web cache will do? It will store the answer in its database and it will give the response to the host which has asked the request. When the web cache receives the object, it stores a copy in its local storage as I said and sends a copy within a HTTP response to the client browser. This is how the web cache works. So why the web cache stores a copy in its own local storage? See if at all after a few minutes or in the future if anybody else in the network asks the same question called how many states are there in India then it will not send the question to the web server instead it will itself give the HTTP response to the client to the client browser. So by this, what is the advantage of this? Why every uh, network should have a web cache? Is the response time can be reduced. See, for every network, if the request is sent and the received, okay. So if uh, to its own web cache, if the request is uh, sent and uh, the response is received, then it may be very few microseconds. If the request HTTP request is sent to the web server itself then it has to pass to so many intermediate servers and no so many intermediate networks which may take time so in order to reduce the response time we can go with the web cache so what is instead of getting the response from the web server if any other server any other proxy server responds for your query then it is called web cache or web cache web caching clear so <clears throat> with this uh, uh, i'm winding up this web caching concept next uh, we'll move on to the next uh, topic
yes this is the diagram uh, which we can see uh, as i said client is giving http request my uh, proxy server gives the response if it has a copy of the answer with it otherwise it will forward it to the origin server that is google server and it will give get the response which will be stored in its local storage and it will forward the same response to the client which asked that request this is how it works next uh, these are all not there in our syllabus so no need to cover these things then we'll go with the next topic that is this role web caching how it works it is ftps the next protocol which we are going to see is ftp so as i said it is one of the protocols of the application layer uh, there are four protocols associated with the application layer one is http other is smtp and the third one is ftp so as the name suggests it helps to transfer the files between the client and the server you can see in the diagram uh, that if at all any user wants to get any file from the server it has to the user or host should get into the ftp user interface and if uh, the user side or the client side will be having the three components one is ftp user interface and the ftp client and the local file system and it has to establish a tcp connection with the ftp server so the port number which is used to, to connect which is used for the ftp is 21 and 20 so the request is sent in the port number 20 and the reply is received in the 20 okay this is how uh, the port numbers are 21 and 20 sorry then once the request is uh, connection is established the tcp connection is established the files will be transferred between the client and the server so ftp server if you take on the right hand side it will be having two components one is ftp server and the remote file system again it will be having its own server will be having its own database so the, these are the components of the client side and the user side okay what are the ftp commands and the replies so how the client is going to get the files from the server so it needs some commands to get the files from the server so the commands which is used are user username for the command is user which indicates username so used to send the user identification to the server so if i am going if i want any file from the server what i have to do i have to give my username which will act as a user identification then i should also give my password it is used to send the user's password to the server once i am authorized if the server finds me as a authorized person then it will establish the connection okay so the third command is list okay it is used to ask the server to send up send back a list of all files in the current remote directory whatever uh, list of files are there in the remote directory this command will list all the files then retrieve file name r e t r is nothing but retrieve retrieve file name it is used to retrieve a file from the current directory of the remote host so it gets retrieves the files then what is the command called store what is the use of it is stor you it is used to store a file into the current directory of the remote host okay so we can sit in one system and we can store the files in the remote host also in its own current directory so these are the commands used to to access the files in the uh, current directory of the remote host clear okay so these are the codes codes and the statements status code and the line code it can also be called a status code and the line code the code says that 331 if i get the message called 331 then it means username is okay password is required who will ask this who will send this reply it is these are all the replies sent by the server and the first five commands are the commands sent or the request sent by the client 
okay these the the second part that is with the code and the status line we are seeing right this is nothing but it is the replies given by the replies uh, which are given by the server then comes 125 data connections already open so after authentication process then the connection will be established once the connection is established data can be transferred so that can be replied by the server with the status code 125 and the status line da data connection already open transfer starting if any if uh, the server finds that the client is not authorized person or it doesn't want to transfer any file then it can give the reply as 425 can't open the data connection and the next thing is 452 error in writing file in any if any storing process any error is there then it will give the message called 452 error in writing file who will be giving all these replies the server will be giving the commands are sent by the, the first parts are, first part five commands are sent by the client so this is all about ftp uh, then we will move to the uh, email in the next class thank you bye bye